What's going on YouTube? JT is born here and welcome back to another edition of my DC comic book reviews and in today's video we're going to be talking about Shadow War Alpha number one. This one's written by Joshua Williamson, art by Victor Bogdanovic. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, but anyway, so this is the start of Shadow War. I was actually trying to find this in my Comicsology app today. I'm like, where is it? It's actually like in the Robin book. So uh, yeah, so Shadow War Alpha, this is the start of that big event they've been teasing for quite a long time. It's going to be taking place in the Robin book, the Destro Incorporated book, and Batman. So for the next like few months, uh, we're going to have this big Deathstroke event with Robin and Ra's al Ghul and Talia al Ghul and Batman. So basically a couple different lineages are kind of coming together for the story of like, it starts with the death of Ra's al Ghul, <clears throat> which seemingly was by the hands of Deathstroke as the whole event was advertising, but we come to find out that it's not actually Deathstroke, it's somebody impersonating Deathstroke to start this conflict. And it's because Slade later on just like, I didn't do that, I haven't worn that suit in a long time. And then, uh, yeah, like, they got some, like, character continuity moments that carry over. Like, you had to deal with the reunion of Bruce and Damien, which they haven't really been in any issues together, I think, since that last Detective Comics arc before the events of the Robin book. Like, that one time where it was, like, kind of their initial reunion after that Teen Titans fallout, and then Damien kind of went off on his own. So they haven't really shared, like, any, like, screen time, like, or I guess, like, comic book time in quite a really long time so it's been like a year at least over a year since the two of them have interacted in like current continuity i guess you could argue what was a death metal but even then i think that was before the robin book so it has been like at least over a year at this point since they've like had an actual conversation so in terms of the first issues of a story arc i thought this one was quite strong so i guess i'll quickly summarize what happens so basically raz al ghul has like we know he's dying based on uh the issues of robin like the lazarus demon and something's happening he he's pretty much like he knows he's inevitably going to die at this point he can't really use the lazarus pits anymore um and like mother soul has been kind of warning him of the dangers of like a great darkness that's coming and so he's like and plus he's kind of like seeking penance for like all like the terrible actions that he's done in the past so he's like okay like i've tried to save the world on my own before it's time i kind of let everybody know so uh we also see damien who's been interacting with his mother so you kind of have those two have been kind of on a better page with each other Roz decides to make a public announcement, uh, telling the world all his secrets. And of course, there's a lot of people within the DC universe who uh, necessarily don't want Roz to reveal all that sort of stuff because he's got some dirt on a lot of people. So he's getting ready to kind of reveal everything that's been happening to him and just, you know, turn himself in because he's done things for thousands of years. And after reflecting for a while, and after also meeting like the the events of the league of lazarus tournament with damien and mother soul and trying to kind of reconcile all these differences uh he's kind of seen a, a bit of change and he's like you know what i'm going to try and change too which is a really interesting take on it because we've never really seen raz al ghul do something like this before and of course before he can finally get to the whole thing um obviously he gets shot we also have a reunion with bruce and damien uh and like oracle's obviously there. like obviously batman's got all the security monitoring everything so in case something happens uh they they're gonna be like quick to you know jump in but obviously it doesn't really go according to plan uh so yeah even like babs is like on oracle's like bruce hug your damn son and like batman's kind of speechless he's kind of at a loss for words but damien says like after this whole thing let's let's talk things through and he's like Roz wants to kind of turn over a new leaf uh once everything's done then we'll talk but before anything else can happen, Ra's al Ghul gets shot in a pretty epic two-page spread. Uh, it's seemingly Deathstroke, at least the way it's done here. Like, Deathstroke's in kind of his old gear, but it's not really Slave. We come to later find out. Uh, Damien's there. Like, all this sort of chaos ensues. He gets shot. Uh, there's a bomb that gets dropped. And before Damien can reach to it, before the clock runs out, Batman grabs and saves him. And we get the emotional <clears throat> kind of hugging moment. Uh, Damien kind of snaps at one point. He's like, what were we doing? He's like, you always find another option. You're Batman, you're Batman, God damn it!" And then he's like crying, having a breakdown, and the two of them kind of share a hug. And <clears throat> it is a bit of a nice reunion, but it's kind of short-lived because Damien's just like, Batman tries to tell him to come home. Uh, he's like, I wanted to tell you everything, all the friends I've met. Obviously, they show Flatline there. He's like, I've lost two grandfathers because of your decisions. Obviously, he's mad because he didn't get the chance to save him, just like what happened with Alfred. So once again, Damien loses another grandfather figure. Um, and then Batman says something that he probably should have rephrased, and even he kind of realizes it. He's like, if I was there, the one there, I could have saved Alfred. And then boom, like 
now you've just made your kid feel a whole hell of a lot worse. And Batman's like, wait, I didn't mean... And then Damien decides, I'm going to find Deathstroke and bring him in dead or alive. So now he's kind of at the choice. He's like, eh, you know what? Whatever happens, I'm going to bring this guy in no matter what. And he's like, without your help. So the two of them obviously are going to have to work through their issues and kind of work together to bring Slade in. Uh, but yeah, like I said, Bruce, terrible choice of words. I, I, I feel like uh, the Joker in like Dark Knight where like Batman's like, let her go. And he's like, very poor choice of words. And then just phew, I feel like you can kind of add that meme in there at some point. But anyway, so Talia's there. She got hurt in the situation too. She didn't go looking for Damien. I think she just like, I think saw that probably he was with Bruce at that point. Um, but she's given the choice to kind of go back into the Lazarus pit. She's like, no, just fetch the doctors. I'm not dealing with the Lazarus pit shit right now. And then she tries to get her crew together. She's ready to go to war with Deathstroke and her other people. And holy shit, is that Mara Al Ghul, Damien's cousin, who like hasn't appeared in anything since, what was it, like Teen Titans Rebirth number one? Obviously, they're showing off the new villain, but. Yeah, like, she just kind of disappeared after that story arc. I remember when I covered that entire, like, uh, run, I was always wondering, like, what the hell ever happened to her? But, yeah, there she is. She's alive. I'm actually interested to see if Joshua Williamson actually does something with her, because I'm like, holy shit, there's Damien's cousin. I haven't seen her in so long. Um, but, obviously, there's other people in the background, too. Like, there's, like, a giant snake-looking lady there. But, yeah, like I said, is she going to actually have a story arc, this, arc in this thing? I would really be excited to see that. So, yeah, like, that's kind of cool. And then Talia's like, kill them all. Slade, obviously, with his new son, who now they're drawing to look pretty much identical to Damien at this point. It looks like his hair color changed, too. Um, so Reese Bond, who doesn't really have, like, an, a name name yet. Um, Razzle is assassinated by, quote-unquote, Deathstroke. And Slade's like, I didn't do this shit. I've been training with you all day. And then, obviously, that's when the war starts, and they're like, death to Deathstroke. And then we have the, uh, what was their name, Angel Breaker or something? I can't remember this character's name. They, they announced it beforehand. Uh, getting ready to start a war against Deathstroke and all that. So, yeah, uh, obviously Slade's preparing for the upcoming darkness, which is the Dark Crisis event because he's had visions of it. Um, but, like, somebody's trying to put these two forces into conflict, and we're left to a bit of a mystery. And even Slade's just like, I recognize the moves of that individual who's doing that stuff. So I don't know who this Deathstroke imposter is going to be. Like, I can imagine it being Grant. I, I, I keep saying Grant because, like, I had the theory that Grant was Respawn, but it turns out Respawn is, like, a genetic clone child thing of, like, Slade, Talia, and I still want to say Damien, but, like, the way it's kind of leaning forward, it's like they are a kid of Slade and Talia because of, like, the genetic cloning thing or whatever. I don't exactly know. That was kind of a confusing uh, first issue, but Slade still calls it him his son, so he's been kind of bonding with Respawn a bit. Um, but, yeah, I, I still want to say that this has to be, it has to be Grant, like, that's, that's the only theory I have left. I don't know why, but I'm just going to, like, assume it's that. Or some other random character who has issues with the Al Ghouls and that. I don't know. Like, it's it's a big kind of mystery right now. Like, who else would have done what uh, the Deathstroke imposter would have done? And what are their reasons for it? But, yeah, this is a big epic action-packed issue. You have the emotional moments. You have kind of the heartbreak in there. And it get, it really starts off the story arc with a bang. Like, I am much more excited to see what happens after this thing, after having, like, uh, read some other recent Batman events, like Shadow of the Bats, it, like, that 12-week weekly event just ended up being a complete waste of time by the end of it. Uh, Fear States just kind of dragged on for so long. But here's an event that's going to be, like, just a quick couple issues, like, just kind of cross over these things. I don't know. Is it, like, this month? or it's like next month and then like may kind of ends right away so it's not going to be like dragging on i feel like as long it's not occupying every single title it's just all the titles under like one writer's books anyways which i'm already reading so it's gonna be like a nine part event which still is shorter than the 12 week uh, shadows of the bat thing uh but it's at least like not gonna drag on i think it's gonna be kind of more exciting and incorporating more elements of the DC universe. Like I said, this feels like a much more interesting event going on forward. And like I said, it starts out with the bang. You got the emotional bits. You got the reunion, which ultimately end culminate in kind of some sort of tragedy. And then you're going to eventually have to have the two characters kind of working together and just seeing how it all culminates and by the end of this whole event. So I, I'm excited. Like, I like I mean, it's going to pick up right away in the next issue of Batman. But, like, in terms of the first issue, like, this started out really strong. I'm kind of intrigued to see where it's going to go from here. I don't know who this mysterious new Deathstroke imposter is going to be and why they started. But, like I said, that has me intrigued and excited. And, and like I said, it builds off character moments from the previous books. Things are tied together quite well. 
And but yeah, like I said, like I said, I'm excited to see what they do with Shadow War Alpha. I think this could be a really fun, uh, entertaining event. Like if, if the rest of the issues are as good as this first one, I think we're going to be in for something great. So if you read Shadow War Alpha or you have any thoughts on it, tell me what you thought of it in the comment section down below. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. Uh, be sure to come back later on today. I'm going to talk about DC versus vampires, and I'm going to try and catch up on some other comic books, uh, and that that i didn't get to last week so there's that all right well that's all i gotta say as always take care now bye bye then and i'll see you all in the next video peace